Good morning. It's good to see you in the house of God this morning. Would you, would you stand with me? Let's praise his name this morning. <laughs> it's just nice to know, isn't it, that in spite of the weather, in spite of people's opinions, in spite of what's going on in the world, we can have peace knowing that God loves us. <laughs> Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning. God, I am thankful that I have the privilege to gather together with my brothers and sisters in Christ. God, I thank you that in spite of the warfare, you are with us. God, we ask you this morning to open our eyes to see, to give us understanding to see not just what's going on in the world, not not the enemies, not the battles, not our struggles and our faults and our failures, but we ask that you would show us your glory. God, we ask that your presence would be in this place. Lord, we need you this morning. I need you this morning. And God, I am thankful. Lord, help us to understand the battles we go through are for your glory. Lord, I pray that we would be unified in the spirit this morning. Lord, as brothers and sisters, I pray that we would come together, that we would lock arms and lift each other up. God, in spite of what's going on, we are going to praise you. We are going to sing about how good you are. We are going to worship you, and we're going to praise you even if we don't feel like it until we feel like it. God, I am excited to see what you are going to do. God, I can't wait to see how you're going to turn all this around. I am believing that when we get to the other side, we are going to shout and sing and dance. And in, in advance, we're going to do that this morning to give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.
welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul away.
sing that verse. Let's sing that verse again. Open the eyes of my heart. like you and there is none beside you God we declare this morning that you are holy 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 king of kings and lord of lords God I thank you this morning that you are the prince of peace Yes, Lord. Lord I feel the power but I feel the peace of God in this house this morning God, I take this as a sign that even though there's battles all around us, we can receive the victory in Jesus' name. Lord, there's warfare and there's battle, but there is peace in the name of Jesus. God, we stand this morning sure-footed in the gospel of peace in the name of Jesus. I declare over every person singing these songs this morning that the peace of Jesus Christ will triumph over every trial you're going through in Jesus name thank you Jesus
our praise. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Just tell him from your heart to his. He's worthy. Amen. A part of this song, it says, here I am. It's a statement. It's a declaration. You stand, you sit here in this house today and you declare I'm here to worship. The previous song was Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. So, in this house today, what do you want to see? Do you want to see, as the song says, high and lifted up? Do you just want to see Him as a supplier of your every want or whim? stand here this morning and declare that He is worthy of our praise. And we're here to worship Him because there's not one of us no, not one 
that can say here today if it wasn't for God. What a simple statement that holds so much truth. If it wasn't for God, where would you be? How would you be living? house is a sweet smelling savor that you breathe in Lord and God I know you are here because your word says it's been testified over before that you inhabit the praise of your people so today Lord we bring glory and honor to you we worship you in spirit and in truth give ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord again a hand clap of praise. Give our worship team an appreciation hand clap. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. And, and now we continue in our worship. One of the greatest things that, that we get to do is to be able to give back to God. Can anybody repay God for what he's already done for you? I put my hand up, and some of you was in agreement with my hand, or you said, well, no, you can never pay back what God has done. But what God has called us to do is the ushers come. He gave us insight to, to give unto the Lord 10%, to pay our tithe, and to give our offerings. I challenged an individual earlier this week, Annette and I was on a little rest and relaxation trip that we just kind of went and, and hung out with each other and did some fun things. But as I was speaking to one and, and he was saying, you know, we come down here and we spend all of our extra money here and then we suffer through the rest of the time because we can't afford to pay anything. And if you know your pastor, you know your pastor was going to direct that statement back to God somehow, and I did. It wasn't very long of a turn that I had to make. And I asked him if he went to church. Oh, yeah, I go to church all the time. I said, are you faithful? Some of you, you can look at me and cock your head like he did. He says, well, what does that mean, am I faithful? I said, do you attend regularly? Do you pay your tithe? Oh, no, I can't afford to pay my tithe. Church, if you'll put God first in your finances, if you'll put God first in your life, in your relationships, how many here today, you don't have to put your hand up. I don't want to embarrass you. They can't see you on the World Wide Web, but uh, they can only see me right now. But how many of you got kids that if you could shake them into heaven, you would just shake them till you wore yourself out? We need to get a volunteer staff, about 10 of us deep, to where we can recoup ourselves for the shaking. Amen. But when we find that we put God first, and we abide by the, the Word, and this is the Word, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all the things we have need of, He'll give it. You see, what's so amazing is if we find ourselves faithful in God, then He gives us the blessings over the top. New cars. New homes. A better job. He gives you more money than month. Find ourselves faithful, amen?
Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless every heart here that has a heart to give unto you. God, as we give, and, and Lord, your word says, let us be cheerful givers. So, Lord, let us give unto you knowing that you are faithful. God, you have and you will and you'll continue to do so. Bless those that have a heart to follow you. So, Lord, we pray that you find us faithful in all things. Amen. amen. And amen. As they pass amongst you uh, this morning... I have a few things I want to share with you. First off, ladies, it is not too late to join the newest life group. And it's hosted by Janet Kent. And we are God's temple. That is the name of the group. It's a 10-week study regarding the mind, body, and spirit. It's a biblically-based study. And it's about feeling better, doing better. Amen? On Sunday, April the 9th. That's not Sunday. I misread my home notes. <laughs> Smile. It happens to all of us. Sometimes to the older ones more often than not. So if you're under the age of 40, just go hoo-hoo-ha-ha -ha at me. Saturday, April the 9th, 9 a.m., the Garden Club will be having their first group of the spring in the coffee house. This is a great time of fellowship while working on the garden outside. Sign up on the information desk. So far, Youth is hosting a trivia game night. It's on also Saturday, April the 9th, here at the church at 5 p.m. Funds that are raised will be used to remodel the youth hall, and it definitely needs some updating. The cost to play is $20 per team and up to four members per team. This is your opportunity to enjoy a great night of fun and fellowship along with a little competition while supporting our youth group. There will be concessions available for purchase. Sign up your team today in the information area out at the information desk. And speaking of Soul Fire... We have a couple of new ministries starting under the Soul Fire Connections umbrella. Wednesday, April 6th, Soul Fire Spark. It's for kids from third grade to fifth grade, and they'll be meeting in a separate classroom downstairs. And this is being led by Amber Weiss. Where is Coffee Shop? She, she's a short little redhead out there. She's running it. And through hands-on fun and creative learning, she'll encourage all the kids to ignite their spark of faith. And Amber's looking for someone to volunteer alongside of her. If you're interested, please contact the office. And then the other ministry for Soul Fire is Soul Fire Next Step. How many are from the ages, you're out of school, all the way up to age 30? Put your hands up if you're proud to be that young. I shouldn't put my hand up. I'm not that. Some of you are thinking, hey, if I put my hand up, he's going to call on me for something. No, I won't. But this is for you. This is for all the young adults, 18 to 30, and it's being led by Jason and Sonia. And uh, it's going to meet every Sunday at 5 o'clock, and it's going to be the first night, Palm Sunday, April the 10th. And uh, it's going to be biblical principles, how to equip young people and the tools that they need to live a full Christian life, and even how to make ramen noodles in more ways than just boiling them. <laughs> if you're a guest here this morning, there's welcome cards. I encourage you to fill that out. Turn that in, and, and there will be a, a, a coffee card and some other gifts for you, and we're thankful that you're here. So I ask that you just turn your attention to the screens in front of you uh, for this this short video. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Shearer, I'm proud of Sulfur. Hi, I'm Monica Summer, I'm proud of Sulfur. Easter means to me that basically we got lucky enough to have a good God and we have a second chance. And Easter means to me that just be grateful that he took his life for ours. Hi, my name is Owen. I go to Soul Fire Youth Group, and what 
Resurrection means to me in Easter is a second chance for everybody. Hi, my name is Jimmy, and I'm the director of All Things Soulfire. Um, what Easter slash Resurrection Sunday means to me, it's definitely about second chances, and it's about opportunities to be better than who we were before we knew who Christ was and before we knew about the sacrifice he was for us. Amen. Our God is faithful. And I'm thankful for all those. We have uh, many opportunities. It's not on my script of notes up here. But if you are wanting to serve in any capacity, right now we have a couple individuals upstairs training uh, in our media. There's others that have signed up to be downstairs working with our children. If you want to be involved, please seek out Billy Joe. She's She's back in the coffee house area right now. She's the administrator. You can call the church. You can inquire. But the greatest thing that, that happens when we find ourselves connected into a house of God is to start to serve. And it's a blessing to serve. Amen. Christ was our example. He come to serve, not to be served. So if you're in, in wanting to or if you're interested, please see Billy Joe. You can see myself. Or my lovely wife, Annette, at the front. So this is the last Sunday of the month of March. And I started a series a few weeks back on March on, moving forward. And as we come closer and closer to that hour that Jesus Christ returns for us, we have to pursue what God wants. We have to find ourselves just not relaxing all the time. And I spoke last night on a Saturday Night Live devotion about the, that there's signs that we need to relax. Annette and I went to relax for, for a week. We, we, didn't, we didn't sit down and do nothing, but we went and we refreshed ourselves and we refurbished our spirits and our minds because guess what? Today starts a brand new week for us. And there's much to be done because Jesus is coming back and he's coming back for a, a church that is without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a church that is watching for him. He's coming back for a church that is ready to be received as the bride of Christ. Amen? Amen. I've already started this spring counseling for marriages. We have a couple marriages that's going to be taking place this summer, and I'm excited for those marriages and, and, and that. But, but how many of you know that life is more than just a wedding? For anybody that's been married for any length of time, how many of you know that it's more than the wedding? You may still be paying for your wedding, <laughs> but it's more than the wedding. Marriage is about life. And you prepare yourself for marriage, and you prepare yourself in living together with the one that you love. And this morning, that supper... The marriage supper of the Lamb is going to take place for those that are diligent. Those that have the pursuit of God. And you need to remember that the pursuit is not over. You have to find your focus. As that comes on the screen, the pursuit is not over. How many of you know that there's yet much ground to be obtained? Pastor Luke has been teaching on the book of Joshua on a Wednesday night. I encourage you to come out and be a part of it, be in the house, set here. I know many of you watch online, but, but you don't have to put your pajamas on so early. You can stay in, in, in your street clothes and come on to service. But there's one thing in the book of Joshua that, that I alluded to last night that I just want to start off with this morning. Joshua in the 13th chapter is saying something like this. I am old and I'm stricken in years. King James says that he's waxed in years. And as he's having this little bit of offset of a pity party, 
God chimes in and the Lord says, yes, you are old and stricken in years. And then he reminds him of the promise. He tells him to get up, get your sandals strapped back on because there's yet much land to be possessed. That promise was given to Moses. That promise then was given to Joshua. And that promise is still here for us today. There is much land for us to take. Now we won't talk about land. Now we're going to talk about souls. How many of you have family and friends that need to know who God is? And for us to be a church going out into the world to make an impact for Christ, we have to realize that as individuals, we have to work on ourselves first. That we have to work upon who we are. Paul wrote to the church in Philippians, and it's Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. It says, not that I have already attained. This is Paul writing to the church. He says, or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Verse 13, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Last week, I shared with you and emphasized, may the future be clear. <laughs> may we see our future clear in how we remember our past. See, we can't live in yesterday's glory. We can't live in yesterday's anointing. We can't live just by abiding in our yesterdays. We have to face today and we have to see what the future of our life is. And, and you can always plan for something to take place tomorrow. But if you do not prepare today, will you be ready? Now, I'm from the old school. I know some of you church is new for you, some of the younger people in here, it's new, and, and, and even coming from maybe what church you attended to here, you find that, that there's all these different situations that we face in this house, but I remember getting ready on Saturday night for Sunday morning service. It was an every Saturday night event. I was supposed to go to my closet and pick out my clothes and I would lay them across the foot of my bed to be ready. And then my mother would come in and inspect what I put down. And she would either give me the okay or I could hear her grunt. And following that grunt would be, JW, this isn't going to work. And so I would go in, and my mother would pick out the clothes that I wanted to wear that next day. <laughs> Everybody heard how I said that, right? <laughs> but you have to stay prepared. You have to pursue God. And see, as your pastor, I just don't stand up here to try to preach you to where you're just happy. I want to preach to you in such a way that you'll dig deep within yourself that you'll make sure that you're ready. Amen. See, none of us know what holds tomorrow. Talking before service, someone said their supply chain at work is starting to slow down. They don't know where they're going to be at in a few weeks or a few months. But the facts are, we don't know what tomorrow holds. But today we are confident that who holds our tomorrow. That God is faithful and God has never let us down. And, and even when we've been down and out, my wife and I was going through some hard times. There was always someone there that God spoke to that became a resource to us. 
See, for us to become everything that God wants, it has to be more than a decision. I've been stating this, you know, for those that was at the uh, No Regrets Conference when I spoke in one of the breakout sessions, you heard me make this statement. You heard me make this statement over the last few weeks. It has to be more than a decision. It is a dedicated determination. Paul says, I press. Paul saying, I pursued God. I pursued that high calling on my life. And if you're here this morning, it is by no accident that you're here. You are here because God wants you to hear that he has faith in you. And God's faith in you are probably greater than what you've ever imagined because you're trying to measure up his faith with your faith. And it pales in comparison. God looks at you this morning and he rejoices that you're in this house. For those that are watching online, he is rejoicing that you have tuned in. Not to hear just a man speak, but to preach the word of God. And the word of God is where we find life. We have to find our focus in pursuing who God is in our life that we may be able to obtain enough knowledge and enough understanding that we do not stand and argue, but we stand and defend the cause of who we are as believers. Can I give you a side note? Don't fall in the little trap that the enemy sets for you to get you to argue over the Word of God. Find yourself standing on the Word of God and let your testimony be yes and amen. My God is faithful. Another side note. You can't pray for God to do something in your life and then void it out because of your own reasoning that He is not going to do it. Anybody ever spoiled the outcome of your prayer by thinking God wasn't hearing you? Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It talks about humble ourselves and repent of our sins, and he'll hear in the next verse in verse 15 that his ear becomes attentive. When we are serving God and we're righteous before God, God hears our prayers. I don't know why I'm going to the third side note, but there's a third side note. It's nothing in my, it's just all flowing from here. How many of you realize that some of you are expecting God to give you a microwave answer to a decade-long prayer? He prayed, and for 21 days he didn't hear a prayer. And when the angel arrived with the answer, the angel said, I've been fighting in the atmosphere. The answer was dispersed immediately, but I had to fight to get here. So don't you give up on who God is, and, and don't become lazy, and don't become just complacent in your walk and pursuit of God. Because when we obtain what God has for us, first as individuals, then for us as a church, and then us for a, a, a community of believers that spreads all the way across this city, See, I believe in my heart as I stand here that just one person hearing the voice of God can change the outcome for the entire world. That if we would find ourselves pliable in His hands, we can change the outcome. And one of us may be saying, well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> I don't. But I know where the answer is. And as we pursue God, God has a faithfulness about him. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us. And in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. There's a plan. God says that he wants to call us home to be a part of, of what he wants for us. It's not coming on the screen, but in 2 Samuel 22, 
verses 32 and 33. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power, and He makes my way perfect. We have to pursue God with, with this intention of catching Him. I remember one night we were having fellowship in the backyard of the resurrection house next door, and, and for whatever reason, I thought it would be fun to play with the little kids a game of freeze tag. You know, where you run up, you touch someone, you have to freeze. And then you hope somebody else runs by you and sets you free. That's a spiritual sign. We just want to be able to run some more. Don't avoid the tag. Don't be like your pastor and avoid the tag. Oh, I'm, I'm just cool. I'll just stand here for a while. Because I got winded. It takes a lot to move this around the backyard of a house. But I use that illustration to give you this understanding. All because the enemy's come alongside of you and touched you and kept you out of the game. Anticipate who's going to run by to tag you. And that's the benefit of being in the house of God. For those that are watching online, that's the benefit of being in the house of God. That someone will come alongside and encourage you. Someone will come alongside and touch you in the name of Jesus. When we decide to make this dedicated determination in the pursuit of who God is in us, we will start seeing the purpose that we have. Now for just a moment, how many of you have been lied to? And I've used this terminology before, that you're not good enough. That your past is going to determine what your future is. Sitting here today that because of poor choices or bad decisions that your future is always going to be downhill and Nothing good is going to come out of it. See, that's the enemy coming against you, trying to keep you from your purpose, trying to keep you from your destiny. And again, as Paul wrote, he says, I press toward the mark. you got to hunker down. That's a southern term. you got to hunker down and, and dig in, and you got to push forward to go forth in what God wants you to do. In this house today, there's individuals that have faced heartache and hardship, don't give up. Do not give up and do not give in. Because the best days of our lives are still in front of us. We can think about all the grandeur and all the great things that took place in the past, but when we find the focus upon God, when we find our purpose within God, our greatest days are in front of us. I know there's not a whole lot of amen going on in here this morning, but that's okay. Because there's some of you that are just sitting there and you're just shaking your head. Because it's hitting home. See, you've been defeated, you've been downhearted, you've been discouraged. But we need to persevere in these days. You have to persevere. You have to find yourself being perseverant in your prayers. Because God still hears. Don't give up because you haven't got the answer. Because the answer's on its way. There's some days you're going through the test to have a testimony of God's goodness. Don't find yourself not pursuing and persevering to be in the Word of God and finding that, that through the Word that you have this, this hope that's applied to us. In Ephesians 1 and 11, it says, In Him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. 
Christ himself said, not my will, but thy will be done. That scripture right there, in him also, we, that's you and I, that's, that's those that are watching online, we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Do not find the focus in what God's doing in your life to become blurred. The enemy's going to come against you. Do I have your permission to look at all of you in the face? See, we are the chosen. You are a chosen generation. That we have purpose and we have all the possibilities of who God is in our life. But we can't give up now. See, I'm even going to move where I can catch the faces and the eyeballs back here. We can't give up now. You can't give up on what God has already promised you. But pastor, you don't know how long I've been waiting. Persevere. Dig in. Hold on. In a conversation my wife was having, I heard the person she was talking to, well, you know that, that God could just do it and just wipe it away in just one swipe of his hand. As my wife answers her, she is squeezing my leg because she doesn't want me to speak. Husbands, do you relate to that? The leg gets squeezed under the table like no one else knows other than the fact that you show that you're being squeezed because your eyeballs start to pop out of the sockets of your head. <laughs> but I was so proud of the answer my wife gave. Some of you are wanting some of your problems to be just wiped away. But let me ask you the question that my wife asked. What are you learning from your, through your situation? Mm, there's some head bobbing. I like that. What are you learning from your situation? Are you learning patience? Are you learning how to persevere through the hard times of your life? Are you learning? This is a great one. Are you learning to be silent? And just pray instead of share it on all of our social media. <laughs> Forgive me. Or we share it to our nail techs, <laughs> our hairdressers. We still have hairdressers around here, don't we? Since COVID, I've been cutting my own hair for the last two years, so it doesn't look good. Don't tell me. Just it's okay. <laughs> just seeing if you're listening. But we have to persevere. And we have to take what is dished to us and not just scrape it off the plate. But why? Why do we go through what we go through? Some of us, we just need to learn. We need to learn to be still and to be silent. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, as it comes on the screen before you, This is what you have a hope of in your life. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things become new. I'm going to ask the praise team to come back up. I've already asked him to sing the song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. We have to find that we persevere and we pursue, and we have to come to an understanding that it's not with the physical eyes, but it's with the spiritual eyes that have to be opened within our lives.
I asked a few questions last week at the close of the service. I don't want to ask them again today. Jimmy put that last picture. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. As I stand before you this morning, I can tell you, according to the Word of God, that the life and the world around us will continue to degrade. It'll continue to fall apart. Well, Pastor, we are the children of a living God. Yes, we are. But according to the word of God, for Christ to return, to take us, his church, those that believe back in to be a part of that marriage supper of the Lamb, these things are going to take place. But I encourage you not to wring your hands together and fret over things. Again, you don't have to worry about What's going to happen tomorrow? You just need to make sure that you are ready and right before God today. Ready and right before God today. So the questions that I asked last week was, what is keeping you from moving forward as God desires? Ask that question yourself. What is keeping me from moving forward? as God desires what excuses do I use in not being found faithful in all that God's called you to be faithful in see scripture in James 4 and 17 therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it to him It is, what does it say? It is sin. So within your heart, if you know you're supposed to pursue God, why are you not doing it? In your heart, if you know that the Word of God says that we're to pay our tithe and to give our offerings, to serve one another, to be found faithful, as we love unconditionally to those around us, why do we not do it? I don't know how life is going to end for each one of us. But very seldom have I ever heard of someone living a life of sin that if God didn't give them an opportunity at their last breath, there's a question on where they will be in eternity. I'm no one to judge. It's hard enough to keep up with, with making sure that I'm always living right. But the pursuit is not over. Don't give up. I'm going to ask you to stand. If you don't know who Christ is, I invite you to come. I will stand here, kneel beside you and I will pray with you. If you do not know who Christ is, I will help you get into the throne room of God and ask Jesus Christ into your life. If you're just struggling, you're not seeing clearly in everything that God wants for you. Not to fill these altars, but for you to step out from where you're at and come to this altar and sing this song. Open the eyes of my heart. See, I want us to see, as your pastor, I cry for you. I pray for you. Have you not understood why I know you all by name? Because I pray for you name after name after name. got guest here this morning. I stood in the back and I prayed over them. 
few guests. I haven't got your name yet because we didn't speak as you came in. But I know what you're going through. I can go through this whole church and call you out by name. Why? Because I've done it over and over and over and over. I look over. I don't see Jessica this morning. I see the people that are missing. I rejoice over you that are here. I am so grateful to God that you're in this house. And I see when people are gone. I ask questions. This song is a declaration from you. Put the words on the screen for me.
like you are hopeless in your pursuit. Pastor, I, all I keep remembering is all the things my failures. I know it's going to sound strange. It might even sound dumb to a few of you. But will you do a physical act with me today? Will you just simply take your right foot or your left foot, whichever one is the best foot? I'd encourage you to go right because we're going to start off on the right foot. you lift your right foot and remind the devil that he's under your foot and take your heel and just grind his little nappy head right there that little diamond shaped snake viper head just smash it down now with the words I said that wasn't meant to make anybody feel bad but I know for myself it's time for us to take back all that the enemy keeps stealing from us. Amen. Amen. So you ready? I'm old. You have a few in front of you, and I'm going to have the podium beside of me. Because I don't want to stumble across this stage. You guys hold on to each other. You ready? Lift your right foot. Devil, you are under my feet. And just grind away. Come on, if you see somebody not doing that because you think it's silly, poke them and say, why are you so rebellious? Just simply do it. Devil, you are under my feet. We have control over this. I got one more push into your life. You ready for it? How many wants to live a holier life? Quit dating the devil. That's easy, isn't it? Quit dating the devil. Well, Pastor, what in the world does that mean? Quit going out with him all the time. You don't have to invite him home and suffer for him. He has nothing to do in your life. Why are you pursuing him? live a holy life that we can find ourselves when God comes back and it can be that quick that we're ready. Now this is what I want to say to you. Annette and I love you dearly. You have been a blessing to us over and over. I look so forward to seeing us come together. See the smiles. To see the joy of the Lord being our strength. We love you. And we want to see you. As we enter into the gates of heaven, I want to see you. So, Heavenly Father, this day we give ourselves to you. God, I am thankful as a pastor of this church. Lord, as the other pastors, the other elders, and the other leaders within this congregation, God, we are thankful that you have placed us here. Lord, find us faithful just to love unconditionally in every hour, area, on every hour of every day. Amen and amen. Go in the grace and the peace of God.
I went to the enemy's camp. <laughs>